has it gotten to the point with Brian that you would consider making a change of quarterback? No, I wouldn't. Um, you know, not right now it's. You know, I look at each game where you know, I know we're zero and four, and it feels um, extremely bad when you when you are zero and four. And I've been in that situation in the NFL, and it, it doesn't feel good. But um, you, you don't want to lose perspective, you know. So you try to look at each game as it is, and you know, I, I know we're zero and four right now, but it, when you lose a total of three games by eight points, um, I know we very easily could be three and one, and. Um, you don't want to make drastic changes just for one reason, as there's a lot of things that go into losing games. It's never just one guy, and um, I try to put all of that into thought. How do you evaluate how players play? I, I think he needs to play better, and I think we need to play better around him. You know, it's similar to what I said last night. You know, when when you have the time and you got guys open, you need to hit them. And um, I thought he struggled with that at times last night, which I know he can do better, and he does also. Um, but I also know when he did make some key throws. Um, Guys weren't great at catching it for him either. So I think it's a two-way street. I think it takes everyone, coaches included. Um, we all need to do better, and um, that's what we got to do. It, it seems like you know he, he's playing with such confidence, you know, uh, certainly on the practice field during camp. Do you see not letting her rip like you would like him to? Well, yeah, I think that happens to everyone. I mean, conf real confidence is um, from experiencing success. And that's when it's real. If you're not, you're kind of trying to talk yourself into it. And that, to me, isn't very real. So, um, you know, when, when we haven't played great in these games and he hasn't played his best in these games, um, you don't have the same type of confidence. Um, it takes some plays to get out of that. I thought that happened a little bit in L.A., um, against L.A. Uh, I thought we had a, a number of opportunities of that versus the Cardinals, uh, especially in the first half. And um, we didn't come down with it. And um, I think that makes everyone press a little bit more. Every job is a competition. Uh, at that spot, do you see this or better in your sort of competing? Could you get better some more time with the ones in practice to kind of take a look at this? Yeah, you know, I, I look at more of the, I don't look at it just as it's uh, Brian versus CJ right now. You know, I look at it as what, what's the best for our team right now. And if I, if I did feel that was the best thing for our team at this time, I, I wouldn't hesitate at all. I mean, that would be an easy decision for me if I thought it was the best thing for our team right now. Um, so I look into the big picture, where we're at right now, four games into it, where our offenses, our defenses, and just really our whole building. And I don't feel it is the best thing for our team right now, so that's something that I haven't started to consider. A third down throw away when you're in, in, in overtime. Is that the right play to make? or The one you... in the red zone? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Would it let, not just give someone a chance to make a play there? Um, well, I mean, there's a chance to throw a pick. If you do, no one was open. I mean, Trent Taylor was the first read, and he was completely covered. Um, we, we thought um, Peterson was going to stay in man-to-man -man on Pierre, um, which he usually does, but he passed it when Pierre went in the in-breaking route. Um, we had Aldrich on an out-breaking route, which he would have been open, but Patrick Peterson was sitting out there because he passed Pierre to someone else, and that was the play, and those two were covered, and um, you need to get rid of the ball at that time. Carl, you brought this up very successful on defense when you brought an extra rusher. That seemed to rattle Carson Palmer, but when the Cardinals got the ball in overtime, they drove into field goal range in just three plays, and you only rushed four, you bring an extra rusher. You seem to concede that underneath passes to Andre Ellington. Why weren't you more aggressive in that particular sequence? Uh, I think it was the first two downs we played zone coverage. And when, when you play zone with the four man rush, um, you drop and they checked it down in the back right away. Um, we want those to be five yard gains. You know, we got to break to the ball a little bit faster, make better tackles in that situation um, to not make it. I think, I think they, I want to say they got 11 yard gain and a 12 yard gain. 17. Um, and then 17. I don't remember what the third play was. I know the first two were completed to the backs. I uh, don't remember what the third play was. Um, but we were in zone both those first two plays, and they got check downs. We got to be better in the kill zone tackling and getting that ball, get in there faster. Um, then we got into our man coverage, and we brought some pressure, got that sack once. Um, but you do it too much, just as you see. I mean, that's what gets them to get the better looks down the field, like they did on the go route that Richard almost picked. And then we had the PI on the one later with Jimmy Ward. So. It's, it's a fine line. You've got to mix stuff up. You know, it's very easy to, if you know they're going to get 12 yards on a check down, obviously you'd love to go man or pressure, one or the other, because those check downs aren't there when you do that. That also, would they have gotten a go route that, at that time? You don't know. So it's, you've got to mix it up. And when we do play zone, we've got to make sure it's a five yard check down and not a 10 to 17 yard check down. So what's happening on the touchdown play? And did Navarro throwing that shoe off the field impact that at all? I'm not sure. It's I, I didn't get to talk to Navarro about that. It's like two minute always. You know, things are going fast. You're trying to get the communication in for the calls. You get it to Navarro. He relays it to the D lineman in the secondary. 
and they got up there, they got set fast, and there was just a little hesitation on our secondary. We ended up getting to the right spots, but we were a foot behind, and when you do that versus a good quarterback, and especially Larry going down the seam, um, they made us pay. So, uh, so what was happening there? What should have, I mean, the, the defense that you guys were in, everybody was on their assignments, ultimately? It, we, we ended up being on our assignments. We were a little off our landmarks. Um, I, I watched that play a few times. I wasn't sure if, was that, was Larry Richard's man on that one, or was that meant to be Jimmy coming over? From? Yeah, it's zone coverage, okay. three deep, four under. Um, so no one has a man in that. Um, but, you know, safety, we got, I don't want to tell you guys all of our rules um, for our coverages, but um, anytime you have three deep, four under, and you got someone going down the seam, there's responsibility of people midpointing underneath hookers, hook droppers, getting depth, so you got to throw over them, which allows a middle third safety to play two verticals on the top. And we were off on a little bit of everything, so there was a, a bigger hole in the zone um, than there normally is. And Carson threw a very good ball and to a very big body, and they got us. Does a slot receiver typically get a free release in that coverage? Yes. Is there someone you consult with during games on decisions such as whether to accept a penalty or whether to challenge a play? Yes. Uh, the guy I said a couple weeks ago, I don't want to give his name twice. He's, <laughs> he got upset with me last time. He's in our box, just all replays. Uh, what, is Ruben close to getting back on the practice field? Is that something that you're moving towards? Uh, we'll see how his rehab goes these next three days. You know, I'd be surprised if he got back this week. Um, I'm not totally ruling him out, but, uh, but it would surprise me. Um, being optimistic about it, but you know, if we don't get him back this week, hopefully we'll get him out there next week. Does the fact that you guys are playing on turf have anything to do with this? Uh, not, uh, no, I don't think so. When he's healthy, he'll be ready to go. You've seen from Bethard just in the last few weeks. You know, we've saw him in camp. We haven't really seen him since. Has he been taking steps uh, that you have noticed? Yeah, the more reps you get, the more I mean, the easier it is to play. But you know, that, that's also a problem in the NFL too. You do There's not a ton of reps. There's not a ton of players out there. So you know, he gets a ton. He gets almost all the scout team reps. So. You know, especially when he's running another team's defense that's similar, um, or another team's offense that's similar to ours, it really helps him. You know, doing some of the LA work. You know, he got to spend all those practices, even though they weren't full speed, running some plays very similar to ours. Um, when he did the Carolina week, it wasn't as much. We got to watch him try to run the zone read and things like that, um, which I don't know how much we'll use him on that when he eventually plays. But um, you know, you got to take advantage of the reps you get on scout team, and then we do mix them in with the with our starters also, whenever he's fell and Brian. So it's kind of the same story for everyone across the league. You got to take advantage of those scout team reps and the few you, you do get with your offense, you got to be ready. And that's why you stay out after with the quarterback coach, you go through stuff. That's why you keep the receivers who aren't going as much. You just keep, keep those practice squad receivers. Some of the guys who aren't getting as many reps as practice, you keep them after and try to simulate everything. Time for your offense to get the chemistry, get the timing together. I mean, it, has it been a, a fast starting offense in year one, or it, has it changed from? Uh, I, I mean, it depends on the year. It depends where you're at when you get there, um, how familiar they are. Um, I mean, it definitely, you don't just come out and expect to be your best right away. You know, you get, you get good going through things, failing together, learning from it. Um, going through experiences, going through different fronts, different coverages. Um, guys get better as it goes. Guys, guys get better as you add to it to build the right stuff for it. Um, I always expect to get better. Um, I, you'd have to look at my career the last nine years, however we did in our first year. I'll tell you kind of more probably that answer at the end of this year. Um, but yeah, it, it does take time. Are, are some of the penalties related to that? And it seems like some of the the passes, the blocking on the passes is, is, a little, is a step or two off at this point. I mean, is that all, is that timing? Um, no, I wouldn't say that's timing. I, I you know, I, you know, I, it had to depend on what exact play you're talking about. You know, I just thought, you know, yesterday from the, the throws and stuff, I think I kind of said that that was just pretty as simple as throwing and catch it um, from both the person who throws it and the people who catch it. Um, you know, the penalties is obviously something we got to get corrected. You know, we've done it way too much. Um, you know, I thought the more we were motioning earlier on those first few games, we had some penalties on that stuff. Haven't got those the last couple games. Um, we have had false starts and things like that. Um, but yeah, we got to clean up those penalties. It's not just offense, but special teams too and defensively. So it's going to be tough to um, overcome some things when you have that, those type of penalties. When it came to accepting that holding penalty after watching it, do you still feel the same way you did last night? 
Uh, well, I mean, any time that you end up not winning the game, I'll second guess everything. But, you know, I, I felt good with what I thought at the time. You know, they're going to be third and 15 and on the 30 yard line. And I had a very strong feeling it's third and 15. I felt it was pretty much a guaranteed field goal for them, knowing that we would probably, they'd do a little ch um, just check down play the next deal, probably get seven yards, and it would be a guaranteed field goal. And, you know, my thought process in there is if you push them back a little bit more, you know, you'll entice them to get greedy. I know we'll play man coverage and come after them, and we'll have a chance to sack them. And if we don't have a sack, you get a chance to get them to get a holding call. So either one of those, now they're out of field goal range, and now I think we can win the game. And um, all I'm thinking about right then is what gives us the best chance to win the game. And I thought by declining that um, penalty, I thought we gave us the best chance to win the game. Now we got the penalty the next play, and now we got to start over, reset, and still got to make sure to keep them out of the end zone. And, hold them to a field goal and then we'll end up tying which is better than losing but uh, we got that pi got the first down and then they hit the touchdown the next play you ever caught a pass in the nfl i have yeah, oh, yeah. earlier in my career i have good you, you didn't look real thrilled with that. It was just, it was the emotion over of not completing the play or um yeah it's just that's pretty much how i feel throughout a, a game I'm pretty i'm wound pretty tight and i never got a chance to spike a ball so that was my first spike yeah, on Carlos and how he's feeling today. Um, I, th I mean, Carlos, is similar as last week. You know, I know he battled through that game. I know he um, wasn't feeling great, but, you know, he played well. Um, was appreciated him being out there and playing hard. And I know I'm, I'm, I didn't get to talk to him personally. I'm sure he's extremely sore from it, but we'll see Wednesday when he comes back in. It's like Marquise and Adrian and Dakota, that they have to. Yeah, Mar I mean, Marquise will be in the protocol. You know, so he had a concussion. Um, Colbert, hamstring, so I'd be surprised if we had him this week. Um, and then um, Dakota is growing, so I'm pretty sure we're not going to have him this week. How's Eric Reed coming along? He's coming along. I think he's similar to Ruben. I mean, I'd be surprised if he was out there this week. A little more optimistic for next week, but still, no, no, first, no guarantees. Solomon is playing as well as he is. Can you do different? Do you, is, is Solomon doing different things with him, or is it just, hey, let's keep him doing what he's doing really? No, well. we've used him a little differently each week, um, trying to find the best groove for him. You know, he's a guy who goes hard. Um, as hard as anyone out there. Um, he's, he can play all the positions. And so that's kind of, to me, what one of his biggest strengths are, that you can put him everywhere. You got to be a little careful with that, too, because you want him to be able to get good at a certain spot also. Um, but I, I've been very excited about Solomon. You know, I know, you know he got his first numbers in that game, but people who run like he does and play as hard as he does, it's, it's a matter of time before good things happen. What's been his best spot? Um, I want to say he's had an exact best spot. You know, I think he, ca he causes some g big mismatches when he's inside. I think he's got the quickness to beat the guards. I think on the outside, he still has the speed to come off the ball and beat some tackles. And I think he's better, been in, better in the run game on the outside also. So it depends what the situation is in the game. Um, but I think he can be a, a weapon of both.